Really? Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. This is so fun. Ooh. Well, when I was reading the book as an adult, after having grown up with it as a child, I kind of had this experience of feeling like I'd never read it before because it seemed so now, it seemed so urgent, it seemed so modern. That was the reason I wanted to make it into a film. I suddenly saw it uh, in my mind's eye. I thought, I know what this film would be and I know how it would speak directly to this moment. And so when I first wrote the script, it was all of that. I knew uh, I was doing something structurally that was different. I knew I wanted to start when they were all adults and then go back to childhood as a memory or as something that is written, something that is being recreated in a writing sense. And I wanted to introduce a biographical aspects of who Louisa May Alcott was and take things from her letters and her journals and her other writings and feet pepper them into the script and then have that be a focal point of what I was doing. But I go to what seems exciting. Um, <laughs> it's difficult because it's a very long novel and there's a lot of wonderful sequences in it and it's hard to decide what to keep in and what to lose. But I think if you look at the text as um, being not just the text of the book, but sort of our collective memory of what Little Women is, then what you have is a kind of an iconography or a language of Little Women that you can then both deliver on and then subvert. Yeah, I mean, I did, I did, I did. I wanted to do the romantic ending of the book. And then I also wanted to pull the rug out from people and sort of change it and make it obviously a construction and sort of have a conversation about why we feel that the narrative we need to give a woman. Married or dead, that's the way we like them. <laughs> the very first person who was on board was um, Meryl Streep. So once you have Meryl Streep, it's pretty easy <laughs> to convince people to come play with you because um, she's the queen. I mean, in the book, Friedrich is described as being an unattractive man who's German, who's in his 40s. I think they say he has not one attractive feature on his face. And I thought, well, no, we're not doing that. This is a movie. I'm gonna do what I want. And then with Timothy, I've always thought of Laurie as being androgynous, just as I think of Joe as being androgynous. You know, in the text, regardless of how he's described, I mean, Laurie is a boy with a girl's name and Joe is a girl with a boy's name. They're very clearly intertwined in their gender fluidity in a way. And I don't want to ascribe too many 21st century ideas onto something that was a 19th century text, but I do think that there is something very androgynous about the two of them and about their relationship. And I think that Timothy, to place it in the 19th century, is kind of, to me, exists in the tradition of the 19th century dandy or flaneur, the person written about art historians and that kind of personage who would wander Paris or or London, and I, I gave him literature to read about that, and I think uh, that kind of um, slight fashionable melancholy is something that was very connected to Laurie. Ambition, and they've got talent as well as just beauty. I intend to make my own way in the What's world. very moving about it is it's feminist, but it's not exclusionary. It's about a feminism that's for everyone. It's a feminism that makes the world better for men as well. And I love the male characters in Little Women, and I also love the men who came to play these characters in our movie. I find it very moving the way they were literally there to support these women. And I think Louisa May Alcott had a very expansive sense of masculinity was, and how it also has more possibilities that it was exploring at the time. And I think uh, her book imagined that more egalitarian relationship. I've had lots of troubles, so I write jolly tales. Well, you know, the quotation at the beginning, I love that because I think right away puts you in the headspace of this distance between what your life was and what you wrote. And that that is one of the things that I wanted to play with in this film. I love a lot of the other adaptations, but I didn't look at any of them while I was working on this. I went to the text. I decided to treat the text as the thing, what was grounding me. And in a way, having all of these different adaptations, what's so wonderful about it, as a filmmaker, it gives me an entire iconography of Little Women, images that we know from Little Women 
that I could then present and play with and deliver on and subvert. And I think that's what's so wonderful about having a common language about a character or about a story is that it allows you to shift it. I mean, this is a, perhaps a poor example, but I always think of it like, like with fashion designers when they do shows of very famous houses. You can play with what the iconography of Chanel is. And so you can make a girl walk down the run runway with giant pearls and everybody knows what that is because they know Chanel, pearls, they, they got it. And I think that that's part of what I was doing with the iconography of Little Women is like, once you know what these images are, crowded around the fire, reading the letter from Marmy, then you can do something with it that's different because you can both deliver on it and then take it back. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for the candy. It's so nice. Love it.